description at the end of chapter 5 شبهناه بذاك الصاحب اللطيف الحبوب اللي ما يريد يروح مكان وقلنا انه it's not enough انه they don't want to go to places they oppose going to places they oppose even the idea of going to places and that's why why we said that it is about attempted motion not only motion itself even attempting to go to somewhere الصاحب الحبوب will you know be like ah ما فيني بارض ما فيني مزاج and friction is the same thing so if we want to look at the definition of friction we say friction always opposes the motion which would occur in its absence and is always parallel to the surface now this is a bit of a weird definition because we're saying friction always opposes the motion which would occur in its absence meaning نحن جالسين نعرفه تعريف سلبي وليس تعريف ايجابي جالسين نعرفه بما سيكون لو لم يكن موجودا وليس بما هو okay we're saying if there is no friction there would have been movement but because there is friction there is not move, no movement but we pay attention that the opposite is not always true. So what we said now is, and if you are into computer programming, we said if friction exists, then oppose motion but this is not equal to saying if no motion then no friction and you might be a tiny bit confused and who okay why am i really saying this more than one time we will uh, look at it in a bit okay if friction exists then it's opposing some sort of motion or actually actually if you're into programming عشان ما تضربوني وتقولوا لي انه هذا غلط while friction exists then oppose motion not if friction exists <coughs> okay it's a while function not an if function but just because something is not moving does not mean there is no friction it could very well be that something is not moving and there is friction and i'll show you exactly how in maybe two or three slides time so we have something sliding, friction is always in the opposite direction. Now the question is, what is it that causes friction? <clears throat> okay. Now, let's zoom in. We have many things that feel very nice and very smooth. You know, piece of paper, table, silk sheets. Okay, very, very smooth. You put it, it slides. It slides. But now if we zoom in using a microscope into any one of these, okay, we will see that these surfaces are actually bumpy. Okay? They're not perfectly, perfectly, perfectly um, smooth. Okay, ma mushkila. I will bring some magic device which will make it smooth. It will take exactly this and it will make it smooth like this. Now here's the problem. I change my magnification from 50x to 500x. And what will I see? I will again see something like this. Let's smooth it again. I will use my magic device. I will zoom in here. Again, I will see this. Okay, and so on and so forth. On a microscopic level, things are bumpy. Okay, and this is exactly what friction is. When these bumps bump to each other with each other, they slide over each other. Let's say a rubbish, friction occurs. 
Okay, you lose a bit of energy. Now, who here has heard uh, terms like uh, Casimir Polder forces, Casimir forces, forces, uh, Van der Waals forces? Have you heard any of these terms before? <clears throat> okay, good. <clears throat> good, 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 good. Okay, now what happens is between these tiny bumps, you have these forces. If you have done chemistry, you know, you have ionic bonding, metallic bonding, uh, covalent bonding, and then types of forces, you have different types of forces. One of them is Van der Waals forces, okay? And this is what happens at these very, very tiny levels. You have these forces that make these bumps interact with each other, attract each other, and stick to each other, okay? Now, what happens is it can be done that if I can get two metal surfaces and I prepare them in a very, very special way, <coughs> okay, and I put them on top of each other, they will be so, so smooth that they will never slide. Instead, what would happen is they will cold weld together because there's so much contact between the surfaces, and we call that cold welding. But usually, what do we need for... Uh, <coughs> what, what, what do we usually need for welding? We need lots of heat. Yeah, But this is cold welding. These two metals will actually stick to each other and to empty them, okay, we will to to to, to Alishan we will need to break them. That's how good it is. Okay. Now here's a question. If I have two blocks, one of granite and one of wood, which one would have more friction force? Wood. Both will have friction, but which one will have more? The heaviest? Wood. The wood. Okay. Some are saying wood, some are saying granite. Okay. Turns out, okay, turns out that friction force, why is it called friction? Friction force <coughs> is actually proportional to Fn. Now, granite is heavier than wood. So when I try to move granite, I expect it to be more difficult to move than wood of the same volume because it would simply be heavier, right? So it should be really, really simple. Heavier weight, heavier mass, heavier weight, more difficult to move, more friction. So friction force should be proportional to Fg. And now I'm saying it's proportional to Fn. Why? Does anyone have any idea? <coughs> well, when I have just one block, I have Fg down and Fn up. Fn is a contact force. It's perpendicular. So good. Fn, Fg, mafarqa. They are equal. Now, what happens if, you know, that was supposed to be me, but it turned out more like a turtle. So I'm going to try that again. Okay, yeah, that's a better fat person. <coughs> okay, Qatta. Okay, let me try something. Uh... Okay, do something. <coughs> if the video, if if it's. Uh... Breaking down with you, go here to this more options, th the three dots. Click on settings. 
And in video, receive resolution, put standard definition, 360p. OK, it, 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 it should help you reduce your bandwidth. Okay. Now, what is my my weight? I went all the way to Mars. I am having my tea. Okay. So, what is my my weight? Also, mg downwards. But now I have a problem. If I want to look at the friction, surely me sitting on top of the granite has added weight to it, which means that it's more difficult to move now. Okay. But now if I'm using FG of the granite, I'm not looking at the full picture, am I? Because I'm missing some more information. Now, the key point we said about friction is it's about contact of surfaces. And what is the contact force we have in this situation? Fn. So, we use Fn. I have an F applied, an Fgs. In this case, my normal force is Fg plus F applied, whatever F applied is. If it's Mg for me, it is. If it's not, it's something else. Are you guys hearing me, by the way? Well? Yes. OK, good. Yes, sir. ما أعرف إنه في شبكة ما في شبكة نعسانين إيش السالفة؟ okay okay sure I can repeat it so the, the so the 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 question okay the question is why are we saying that friction is proportional to the normal force, not to the gravitational force. Because the gravitational force can have other forces in addition to it. So say, for example, I am pushing on the concrete block, or I'm sitting on it, or there is a rope that is holding it, or, or something. OK, so <clears throat> these things, OK, um, these things, will add or reduce from the net force, OK? Now, the only contact force we have here, the, an actual contact force, which is directly dependent on the contact between the surfaces, is the normal force. So we use the normal force because it is our contact force, and also because it means that it, it, it means that it will take into consideration all the other forces that are in existence there. OK. <clears throat> I'll, sh I'll, I'll show you a couple more examples, and hopefully it will become clearer. Now, first thing first, OK. Let's do one of these. OK. <clears throat> so this is PIQ1. <clears throat> Start a poll. PIQ1. A, B, C, D, E. Launch. <clears throat> OK. A block slides on a horizontal surface which of the following will increase the frictional force on it? Putting a second block on top, decreasing the surface area of contact, increasing the surface area of contact, decreasing the mass of the block, or all of the above, above would increase the force, the frictional force on it.
So let's give it a minute while everyone answers. If you do, if you are on a mobile phone or an iPad, you don't have access to Google Pause. Um, just uh, you know, put it in the chat. Okay, we have quite a few votes racking up. That's good. <clears throat> so I see quite a few A's. I see some C's. I'll give you about 30 more seconds if you have not responded so far. Okay, let's see. We have about 90 people who voted. <clears throat> Most people chose option A. Few people chose option C. A couple chose other options. That's good. That's very good. Now let's analyze these options one at a time. Okay. Let's analyze these options one at a time. <clears throat> Decreasing the mass of the block would reduce the normal force. And we said that friction is proportional to the normal force. So that's not possible. If that's not possible, then all of the above is also not possible. So we've taken two options off. <clears throat> okay. Now we have <clears throat> putting a second block on top. That would increase the amount of mass. That would increase the weight. That would increase the normal force. Yeah, that sounds like a good option. Decreasing the surface area of contact Mm, we said that friction is because of contact and decreasing the surface area of contact means less contact. So that would maybe reduce the friction force. Pretty much no one chose that option. Okay, we can take that option off. Now option C is a bit weird. <clears throat> Increasing the surface area of contact and a few people chose it. And it's a good thing to think about it. Now, we said that the surface area of contact, friction is because of this contact that happens. And increasing the surface area of contact means more of this, which also means, OK, if it means more, more, more of this, then it means more friction, right? Anyone thought this way, and that's why they chose that option? 
Okay. Now this sounds like a rather reasonable question. Yeah. This sounds like a rather reasonable question. It, 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 it makes sense for the most uh, part. Okay. <clears throat> now here's the thing though. The answer is no. Increasing the surface area of contact does not actually increase the friction. Why? Because friction is only proportional to the normal force. And whether I have a block that is like this or the same block like this, my, my normal force is equal in both cases, right? My normal force does not change. And so my friction force does not change. Do you have any questions on this point? No? Okay, cool. Victor, can you please repeat why we don't say increasing the surface area of content? So we said that friction depends on the normal force, صح? <clears throat> Whether we have المكعب نايم على بطنه أو واقف في كل الحالتين Fn is the same. The mass does not change, so Fn does not change. So if Fn does not change, then my friction does not change. Okay. Now, even if my area here increases, okay, say my area here increases, okay, but if my area is increases, then my pressure decreases, right? Because my force, my Fn is still the same. But my area increased, so my pressure decreased. So the distance between these two, if, it, if, if this was this distance now, it will become more distance. So the force between them will be less. Meaning overall, overall, the friction force will not change. It's like ask. It, it, it's like telling me which is more, giving you one hundred reals and two fifty real notes, or giving you one hundred reals and one real notes. Which is more? The same. It's the same. Yeah. In one, I get more notes, and one, I get less notes, but at the end of the day, I still get 100 reals. And here it's the same. My normal force is the same. Now, if the area is less, my pressure is more, so they are closer together, and I get big, bigger notes. If my area is more, my pressure is less, so I get one real notes. But in the height of my Fn is still the same. It doesn't change. Okay. Now, Doctor. Are you on? Uh, now, uh, the normal force uh, depends on the area or what? No, the normal force depends on the forces, not on the area. So, if you go back to our notes from the previous chapter, the normal force is the force that balances other forces going downwards. Right? It has nothing to do, we never mentioned area at all. Yeah? Okay. Okay. Now let's take a real world example because, you know, we have an awesome shopping cart here in which we have put an entire elephant. And that is a very real, real world example. Now, apparently I'm a very bored person. I go into alien spaceships. Today, my mode of entertainment, put an elephant in a shopping cart 
and attempt to push it. I will push it with force F in red, and my friction will be force small f in blue. Now, I'll need your help here to figure out what happens. I start pushing with a certain amount of force. What's going to happen? The same amount of force. Not not. Okay, I'll get the same amount of friction. And will I be able to move? No. Okay, so no movement. Yes, Azhar, you raised your hand. No, maybe it was a mistake. Okay. One of you decides, okay, Dr. Hada Shikla Masahi, let's help him out. Push. I get more force. What happens to my friction force? Increase. Okay. My friction force also increases. A third person decides to help us. More force, more friction. A fourth person decides to help us. More force, more friction. And then eventually something happens. We have enough people that, I mean, yes, I know an elephant is uh, very heavy, but eventually if you have an enough number of people, we will be able to move that cart, right? We will be able to move that cart eventually. Now here's a question. Have you ever tried to move something really heavy and it was really, really difficult? You got someone to help you move that object, that heavy object. But after you started moving the heavy object, it became easier to move it. Yes. You have a really heavy box. Towel, tutfur, 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 my tarak. Tuli has a dictish or tuli has a big tal saaduni. Once it starts moving, it appears as if it's easier to move the box. Okay, Khalas, Badina and Harakil box. شكراً ما أحتاج مساعدة الحين أقدر أحركه بنفسي. Have you ever have had this before? Yes. Okay. Did you think you were crazy when this happens? When كم جالسين تتخيلون أو يتهيأ لهم يتهيأ لكم هذا الشيء؟ Yes is an acceptable answer, by the way. No. Okay. Maybe you thought I'm suddenly... It did not become lighter, but actually something even weirder happened. Friction decreased. So your friction kept increasing, increasing. You push more, friction pushes more. You push more, friction pushes more. You push more, friction pushes more. You push more, and so suddenly friction goes. I'll like, but خلاص ما فيني بعرف تراني مليت. Go ahead. Okay, and your friction suddenly decreases after some maximum value. Your friction suddenly decreases and then goes in a straight line. Constant amount of friction. But that doesn't make sense. Now that doesn't make sense. And you probably the thought... The weight change. The weight did not change, right? Yeah, why well, it's decreased. So this does not make sense. Why would it decrease? Surely I have done something wrong. Turns out, I have actually not done anything wrong. The friction decreases even though the weight did not decrease. Let's let, 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 let's go back to the molecular view. Yeah. Now what we said is the reason friction happens is because of this bumpiness and the interaction between these uh, non between these bumpy parts, right? Between contact points. Now, if you've ever done chemistry, you will know that things bond. There are forces. Even van der Waals is one of these forces. Okay, now what happens when something is staying in the same place for a long amount of time? All these bumpy pieces will bond with the other bumpy pieces from the other surface. صح? You got here on top, 
you got one, two, three, four, five. You got this. هذول وهذول بيتصاحبوا 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 and they will bond, right? بيصير كأنهم مربوطين مع بعض. Now once you get enough force and push and it starts moving, what happens to these bonds? Breaks. You break these bonds. Now while you are moving, what's happening is these surfaces are still bumping against each other, but they don't have enough time to form the same strong bond that you th that was established from before. These bonds are constantly forming, breaking, forming, breaking, forming, breaking, forming, breaking. Yeah. Remember, these things are on a very, very tiny scale and you are moving this at few meters per, you know, few centimeters per second at least. Yeah. So these bonds are making and breaking at the same time. So it does not have the same effect. It does not have the same strength. Okay. This is why your friction becomes less. And I'll explain it a bit more in a second. But first, okay. I want to see that we have understood this properly. So I will do PIQ 2 dash A, 0, 5 newtons, mg, launch, and PIQ 2 B, 0, 5 n, mg, launch. Okay. Now we have two different questions here, okay? If I have a block that is lying on the floor, what is the magnitude of the frictional force on it from the floor? And then, if a horizontal force of 5 newtons is now applied to the block, but the block does not move, what is the magnitude of the frictional force on it? Again, 0, 5 newtons, or mg. I'll give you a couple of minutes to answer these. Victor, the first question, if or of? What is the magnitude, if the frictional force, on it from the flow of the frictional force? Sorry. So someone has made a mistake. Uh, text box. Okay, here we go. Shape fill, fill it with white. Okay, here we go. Magnitude of the frictional force on it from the ground floor. Okay, let's see what do we get. Okay, you have zero, few people said mg, 
and most people said five newtons in the second one so a block lies on a floor what is the magnitude of the frictional force on it from the floor so the block is just staying there on the floor it's not doing anything no one is trying to move it it is just lying there on the floor what was the definition of friction when we attempt to move we said if there is an attempt to move it there will be friction right is anything attempting to move the block no no so is there any friction no, no. There's no friction because there is no attempt to move it. Now, in part B, there is an attempt to move it. There is an attempt to move it with five newtons, and it's not moving. So the frictional force on it will be? Five newtons. Five newtons, because that means the net force is zero. Good. Now, that's it, and that means we have two types of friction. We have static friction when things are not moving, and we have kinetic friction for when things are actually moving. So finally, some mathematics. Static friction is this first part where things are not moving. And we say Fs max, so this point, is equal to mu s fn. Mu s is not a vector. It's a scalar. It's just a number which we call the coefficient of static friction. It is a number usually between 0 and 1, but can be more than 1. Okay, More than 1 is not impossible. Actually, in some cases, we want it to be more than 1. And I'll give you an example in a second. Okay, And the value depends on the materials in contact. Remember, it's an, on Fn, and Fn is a contact force. So I want to ask you a question. What is mu s of wood? And what is mu s of granite? Which was what we started this chapter with. Mu s I'll give you a minute. bigger than wood. OK, mu s granite is bigger than wood. I'll give you a minute. Everyone go and Google. Get me what is mu s for wood and what is mu s for granite. Doctor? Mm -hmm. I have a question about the previous idea. So we can conclude or say that generally friction forces depends on the weight and the surface, surface or we can't. It depends on the normal force and the surface. So it's also depend on the surface. Yes. OK, thank you. No. Yeah, but 40 seconds left. Let's see if anyone can actually get me the mu s for wood and granite, because I'm just too lazy to Google it. Twenty seconds, Doctor. Yes. Maybe it depends uh, for other uh, surface. Depends on what? Sorry. Other area, other surface. Okay. Can you explain it a bit more? Maybe if if a uh, fraction between wood and wood, the the. Mm hmm keep going but but uh, if 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 a fraction between wood and uh, another uh, another uh, area that mm -hmm. that's that's uh, different ah uh, excellent point excellent point now see what we said it depends on the materials in contact 
What did we say the definition of friction was? Two surfaces bumping against each other, right? So what is mu s for wood? This question makes no sense. Because wood has bumps, but wood versus what? When wood bumps against some other wood, it will have some mu s. When wood bumps against granite, it will have another one. When wood bumps against a wall, it will have something else. When wood goes against interlock, it has something else. So this is actually, I cannot have. There are no values for mu s wood for mu s granite. Now, some of you brought some values. Wood 0.25 to 0 0.5, dry wood 0.65, granite 0 0.53. Okay, now what these values actually are, are for wood with something else or for granite with something else. So I can have mu s for a wood granite surface, or I can have mu s for wood wood surface, for example, and so on and so forth. But I cannot have a, mu, a, a coefficient of friction for just one material. It needs to be between two, two surfaces. The two surfaces can be of the same material or of different materials but there need to be two surfaces, okay? The other type we have is kinetic friction, okay? Kinetic friction is the same as, uh, the kinetic friction is the same as static friction, but it is only when something has already started moving. And you will notice, what will you notice here? What is the coefficient of, sta of kinetic friction? Compare it to static friction. Fs was mu s fn. Fk is mu k fn. And fk is less than fs. What does this mean? What did we say a little bit earlier? Again, doctor? قبل شوية إيش قلنا لما قلنا لما نحن نحاول نحرك بوكس أو شيء ثقيل بعد ما نبدأ نحركه نحس كأنه وزنه خف صار أسهل حركته. And now in the graph we are saying that F K is less than F S. What does this tell us about the relationship between mu S and mu K? Mu S is bigger than mu K. Yes, mu s is always bigger than mu k. Mu s is always bigger than mu k. Okay. Now, some of you might be wondering, okay, what's the point of all of this? Why are we doing this? Okay. Uh, anyone here is into hiking? Sport shoes? Going to walk on mountains or riyadh or something like that? Yes. Okay. You buy shoes. كل سنة نايكي أديداس وهذول الجماعة يطلعوا جوت جديد. إيش الفرق بينه وبينه وبين الجوت القديم؟ دائما في كلمة يستخدموها خصوصا حال الهايكينج أو حال التسلق. There's a word they use. They always say better grip. بالإنجليزي صح؟ أو بالعربي يقولوا ثبات أكثر أو أعلى صحيح؟ أوكي okay. yes. Those who are not into hiking or climbing Anyone here into Formula One؟ شوفوا سباقات سيارات حتى لو في الأفلام لو ما تتابعون السباق نفسه هل عمركم لاحظتوا أنه س... أنه تاير سيارة السباق مختلف عن تاير سياراتنا العادية في شيء مختلف فيهم إيش الاختلاف إذا حد منتبه ما في نقشة ممتاز ما في نقشة صح عريض وما في عليه نقشة فاضي نظيف. إنزين. ليش نظيف؟ 
less friction less friction they are trying to reduce friction it's the opposite of the shoes shoes they are trying to increase the friction in these tires they are trying to minimize friction okay but even then even then although it's very very smooth if you're into racing you will know that every 20 or 30 laps they need to do a pit stop and change the tires why Okay, here's what happens. Look at the tire. This tire was absolutely flat when it started. Look at how it looks now. This is a tire that is designed to minimize friction. But after 30, 20 laps at high speed, high friction, high heat, look what it looks like. Yeah. Now, on the other hand, on the other hand, what happens as soon as it starts raining in races? They try to increase friction. friction. They what, sorry? Increase friction. How do they do that? Decrease friction. As soon as it starts raining, they change from these tires, which are super smooth and super nice and super flat, and they move to something like this. Yeah. Actually, here you go. Look, these are dry tires, which are very, very flat. Then you have intermediate tires, but then you have the full wet tires, which look more like our, our, our car tires. They need to increase the coefficient of friction if it's raining, okay? Otherwise, the coefficient of friction would be so low, they will not be able to drive the car. They will not be able to have any control on it. Okay? Let's look at us at, at, at a sample problem from your book. Sample problem 6.02. You have a car, okay, which is moving at 10 meters per second, and the brakes fail or lock up. Now, now the car has to stop, go to V equals zero, only depending on the friction between the tires and the road. Now, and on, in a dry environment, mu k equals about 0 0.6. What is the acceleration of the car? Or sorry, not what's the acceleration. What is the distance the car needs to move to, be, to, to stop the movement fully? To get to v equals 0. Well, we know that sum of F equals MA, and here the only force we have is friction, and it's in the opposite direction. So minus FK equals MA. I substitute FK is mu K FN, and FN is simply here MG. We don't have anything else. So I have mu K, MG, MA, and my A is equal to mu k g right i have my equation s equals v squared no so i have v squared equals u squared plus 2 as and i rearrange it to have my distance as the subject i will end up with about eight and a half meters so the car would slide for about eight and a half meters. Now, what happens when it's icy and the coefficient reduces to 0 0.1? It's slippery, literally. 
my mu decreased from 0.6 to 0.1. What's going to happen to the distance? Increase. To increase. increase. And here my mu decrease is uh, reducing by a factor of 6 from 0.6 to 0.1. So my distance goes up by a factor of 6 all the way to 51 meters. Okay. Now, this is sample problem 6.02. I urge you to try to do it alone at home, especially part C, when we have the same card sliding down the icy hill with mu k equals 0 0.1. But now, instead of a straight line, you have a tiny, tiny angle of 5 degrees. Tiny angle. 5 degrees is nothing. 5 degrees is what you do when, you know, when you are on, uh, on the treadmill at the gym and you're trying to burn a few extra calories. Okay, it's nothing for a car. Okay. Now, I'm not going to do it in details. I'm going to leave it to you to do it on your own from the book. But what you should find out is that your distance ends up being about 410 meters. Imagine that, just a five degree angle reduces, uh, increases the distance from 51 meters to 410 meters. Not very fun. Okay, we've got 10 more minutes. We have time to start. Yes, we have time to do this. Let's go to section 6.2, the drag force and terminal speed. Now I'll show you two clips Okay, two movements. Take a look at them and tell me what do you see. This is a ball falling in air. I'll do it again. And this is the same ball falling in water. Do you notice anything? It doesn't jump again. It doesn't jump again. That's one observation. That's a good start. What else? It slows down. It slows down. That's a good second observation. Anything else? There is no water come out. OK, no water comes out. That's another good observation. Look at the state of the ball inside the water. The speed is decelerating. Is it decreasing? It's not accelerate. It's not accelerate. Not accelerating. The speed seems to be the same inside. صح? It appears as if it's moving at a constant speed inside the water. Do you have any idea why? Well. Again? So far, yep, so far, whenever we have discussed a problem, we have always said, ignore air resistance, ignore air resi resistance, صحيح? Yes. Today is the day we stop ignoring air resistance. Today is the day we started looking at air resistance. Now, one of you <clears throat> is probably thinking, Shakla Dr. Nahsan, you are in a mind, we call in the air. Well, let's start with water. When we are in water, there is resistance, it's obvious. So we have mg downwards, and we have resistance up. We call it drag. Okay? We call it a drag force. Air can be looked at also as a fluid. Okay, so the way we treat air or liquids is actually very, very similar gases and liquids. We, both of them, we treat them as fluids. Actually, when something moves in air, if this is the particle that's moving in air, the one that I have colored in, 
<clears throat> okay, these lines are, are how air move around that particle. Does it look similar to anything else you know? If it doesn't look similar to anything you know, I need to make sure you are Romanian and we are going to do it before. Who of you has at some point in their life? Doesn't this look like what happens to the surface of water when you throw stone in it? Waves? Yes. Yes? This is because they're both fluids. Whether we're looking at air or we're looking at water, okay, it's exactly the same thing. Okay, it flows like this. Now, the only difference is water is thick and we can see it. So we can see the waves. Air is transparent, so we can't see the waves. Okay. All right. So the drag force can be calculated using an equation. D equals half C rho AV squared. D is the drag force. C is another coefficient. Usually 0 0.4 to 1, but can go higher. Okay. Rho is density of the fluid. So actually, I'm going to change the term air, and I'm going to put here fluid density. Because if it's in water, then rho is different than for air. A is the effective cross-sectional area, and V is velocity. Now, what do I mean by effective cross-sectional area? See, I have a cylinder. And I cut it like this. What will I see? Circle. I'll see a circle, sir. Huh? What if I cut it like this? Bottul. Mustatil. Bashuf mustatil. Or another question I can ask is, either, either, if, if I shone light on it, what is the shape of the uh, shade that I'm going to say to see? Shakil al right? This is what we call a cross-sectional area. If I have something 3D and I'm trying to see what the 2D shape is, it's a cross-sectional area. Now, if you are into winter sports or if you are into dancing, okay, performing that but performative dancing. You will know that when in sports like skiing, for example, when you're trying to go faster, you usually have the egg position. You are closing yourself and bringing your limbs on the inside. Or in uh, ballet or in ice skating dancing. Okay, when, you, when, when the ballerina or the ice skater want to go faster, they usually try to make themselves smaller by huddling in that position. The reason is they're trying to reduce their cross-section area. There's a lot of physics going on there. Okay. They're trying to reduce the cross-section area to reduce the drag force, to reduce their air resistance so that they can move faster. Yeah. Now. You will notice that D is proportional to C, proportional to rho, proportional to area, but it's proportional to velocity squared, which have very, very important consequences. It means that when velocity increases by two, your drag increases by four. When your velocity increases by four, your drag increases 16 fold. Yeah, 2V will make it 4D. If, if my V becomes four times, four V, it will, this, the drag will end up 16 times as bigger. And that has a very, very important ramification. Okay. Let's look at this. Downwards, it goes MG. The force down for the, by gravity is MG. And the force up is proportional to velocity squared. Now, when we ignore air resistance, 
The velocity kept going up and up. With each second, it increased 9.8 meters per second squared, right? But now we have air resistance. What happens when the drag force upwards becomes equal to the gravity force downwards? My net force becomes zero. So initially, I throw an apple from rest. There's nothing up. There's only gravity down, mg. My initial velocity is zero. My initial uh, drag is zero. Then I start having some velocity after one second, for example. I also start having some t, right? And net force equals ma. So drag, which is upward, minus mg, which is downwards, is ma. Now, after a bit, we have more velocity, so we have more drag. mg is still the same because my mass did not change, my weight did not change. Now, what happens when at some point drag is equal to v? Sorry, drag, because of v3, drag is equal to mg. The drag force is equal to mg. The forces are equal, up and down are equal, so my net force is zero. So my acceleration is zero. And what happens when my acceleration is zero? When my force is zero, what happens? The velocity will not change. The velocity will not change, which means for all the time after that, the velocity will remain constant. So initially my velocity increases, my drag force increases. Later on, my velocity is constant and my drag force is constant. And for all this later time, I am stuck with the same velocity and that same velocity is equal, is, is called terminal velocity. That velocity does not change. So if you throw something, from an airplane, it's not going to keep increasing its speed more and more and more and more and more. It will increase its speed only up to a point where drag is equal to gravitational, uh, gravitational uh, uh, force, and then your acceleration will become zero, and then that thing will remain at that velocity all the way until it hits the ground. This is why we kept ignoring air resistance up until now. So d minus fg equals ma. When acceleration is equal to zero, that means half zero av squared minus fg is equal to zero. And I can rearrange this to have v as the subject. And I end up with 2mg over 0a square root. So you bring me any object, give me its mass, Tell me what medium it is in, what's its coefficient, and what the area is, and I can immediately calculate what its terminal velocity is. What's the maximum velocity it can? Remember that video we watched? Mal al Risha will bowling ball? Risha can have much slower velocity than the bowling ball. The reason is the bowling ball has a, had a much bigger mass, so its V was much bigger. And the feather had a much tinier mass, so its V was much smaller. Now, of course, what happens in vacuum? What happens to this equation in vacuum? No air resistance. Okay, but what happens to this equation specifically? Which, which term starts going crazy? B and M. Maybe. Mass is still there in vacuum. G is still there in vacuum. Your area is still there in vacuum. Now, I don't know about C, but rho is a problem because what's the definition of vacuum? That there is nothing. And if there is nothing, then what is my density? Zero. Zero, which means I am dividing by zero, which means, you know, this equation goes crazy.
So we cannot use this equation for vacuum. We need to calculate velocities in vacuum using a different method. Uh, Mariam, you put two faces. Are you confused about something? Do you have any questions? No? OK. So we will start next lecture, inshallah. It's 124, so we'll stop here. We'll start next lecture, inshallah, by looking at uh, a sample problem. And then we will move on to 6.3 and so on and so forth. Doctor, I have a question. Of course. Can you please just open the first slide? The very first slide? Yeah, I think. Yeah? Uh, not this one. Ah, uh, the, uh, the uh, number five. Yeah. So when you wrote the equations here, you wrote it without signs, okay? I mean, because it goes to the minus y coordinator, should we write it with the minus? I mean, when we Which answer the equation? equation? I mean, fn equal to fgs plus fabb. Uh, this with the signs. So let me show you. So since this block is not floating or sinking, the sum its acceleration is zero, which means the sum of its forces need to be equal to zero. 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 So we have FNS, which is going up. Okay. Minus FGS, which is down, minus FAPP, which is down, is equal to zero. So FNS equals FGS plus FAPP, which is this. Directions are taken into consideration. Okay. Okay, doctor. Yeah. Uh, also, doctor, in the yes? graph, the graph, when we wrote the relationship between FS and FN, I think, Mm hmm it's always like this I mean always uh, if it's come in the positive coordinators it's okay we shouldn't like care about its signs even in the graphs mm. you can have FS in the negative but then that is because you defined your coordinates in a very very weird way okay yeah, so I can have something that looks like this, but that's that, that, that would then mean that I defined my positive and negative directions in a very, very weird way. Okay, just okay. the last question. Okay. Uh, and Sunday, we're going to have tutorial for which sections? Uh, I honestly have no idea. Let's check. I'll stop recording so that the file doesn't become.